After our first run on the PTR reciprocating saw test track, several of you commented that we were cutting too fast in the cast iron. We aim to match what pros are doing in the field, which is typically to run that saw as fast as possible. But we hear you, so we ran a series of tests to see what happens if we adjust our speed. We're using the same 2-inch cast iron and Lennox Laser CT carbide tip blades for medium metal that we used for the test track in this experiment. The saw we're turning to is DeWalt's 20-volt max power detect model. Our goal was to look for two things specifically, cutting speed and blade life. For the first test, we cut at full speed all the way through. In the second, we feathered the trigger for a soft start before going to full speed and wrapped it up by feathering the trigger for a slower blade speed during the entire cut. Before we jump into the results, let me take a quick second to say thank you for clicking on our video. We hope it's helpful. While you're here, consider subscribing to our channel and hit that bell to get notified of our next head-to-head -head video. When you're finished watching this one, check out the results of our reciprocating saw test track race. So back to our cast iron. At full speed, the first cut took 35.86 seconds, while the second slowed to 51.27 seconds. The teeth were trashed enough at that point that a third cut was impractical. Moving to the second test, the soft start seemed easier on the teeth, but the overall time for the first cut was a slower 45.27 seconds. The second cut took nearly twice the time at 1 minute 28.76 seconds. Keeping the speed slower for the entire cut in the third test, the blade really seemed to melt through well. It was still slower than the full speed cut at 43.99 seconds though. The second improved over the last test, finishing in 1 minute 18.24 seconds. Clearly, full speed is the fastest way to cut, at least on those first two cuts. But what about the blade life? Well, in all three of our tests, the blades were done after just two cuts. Now, we, we could have pushed it and gotten a third cut out of them, but the start was so slow that it just felt cruel to our arms to keep going. We took a closer look at what was happening at slow speed and by putting the used blades under a microscope. What's interesting is that it's the teeth on the far end of the cut that wore down first and really slowed down the second cut. The front of the blade was still making good progress. By the end of that second cut, though, the front and middle teeth were showing serious wear and breakage, sending all three blades to the recycle bin. Now keep in mind this is cast iron we're cutting, a seriously tough material, so we're not disappointed in the life of these blades. But let's get back to the main point. Were we handicapping the reciprocating saws by cutting at full speed? Based on these tests, it looks like we gave each saw its best chance for a fast finish, and that was our goal. Flipping over to real world work, there's some real benefit to slowing down. There was less vibration and better control. If you're demoing a property and need to cut a chunk of cast iron out, working at a slower speed can potentially reduce the vibration fatigue you feel. It's easiest if you have speed controls and don't simply have to feather the trigger, though. So what do you think? Do our results surprise you? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching. Help us out by subscribing to our channel below. If you enjoyed what you saw, hit that like button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on our latest videos.